Hi, my name is Terry Calls, and let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Wisconsin, where I received my bachelor's degree in music performance. I then moved to New York to work as a professional musician for many years. In fact, I've now lived in New York longer than I did in Wisconsin. I'd like to chat with you today about issues you must think about when you try to record and mix in your home or production studio. In 1979, TIAC introduced the 144 Porter Studio, and the recording industry hasn't been the same since. Today, for only a few hundred dollars, modern DAWs provide digital recording quality and capability that cost several hundred thousand dollars at the end of the 21st century. However, the one important feature that still distinguishes a state-of-the-art facility from most semi-pro and project studios, real acoustic treatment especially bass traps. Top-line studios spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in an acoustical analysis, planning, and construction of their live rooms to give them a fabulous ambient room sound. So it is unrealistic to expect an acoustic guitar recorded in your bedroom with a $100 mic to have the same quality as that same guitar recorded in a top studio using a $4,000 Neumann U87 microphone. Your bedroom with all your stuff in it is no comparison to a professionally tested, designed, constructed, and outfitted control room. The biggest problem you have is the lack of properly designed bass traps. Properly designed bass traps will transform a muddy sounding room, having poorly defined bass, into one that sounds clear and tight and is a pleasure to work with. Without effective acoustic treatment, it is difficult to hear what you're doing making you work much harder to create a good mix. Many people believe that using near-field monitor speakers avoids the need for acoustic treatment. In truth, even with small loudspeakers playing softly, acoustic interference still causes standing waves, meaning the imperfect frequency balance is exactly the same, but at a lower level. Likewise, adding a subwoofer will not fix problems that are due to poor room acoustics. While a subwoofer can compensate for inadequate loudspeakers, it will not solve the problem of an irregular response caused by acoustic interference. In fact, a subwoofer often makes matters worse by compounding and hiding the real problem. Another common misconception is that equalization can be used to counter the effects of acoustic problems. But since every location in the room responds differently, no single EQ curve can give a flat response everywhere. What do you do? Let's look at the ways of minimizing the issues that you have with your room. Monitors are best in a properly treated room. Headphones are the same regardless unless the environment is terrible such as road noise, dishwashers, air conditioners and so forth and even in those cases they will likely be better. Stereo image is going to be easier to judge on monitors, so as long as they are properly placed. Reverb will be easier to hear on headphones, though it may cause you to use too little because it's so apparent. So what's the solution? The best thing to get is both of them. I really can't imagine what it would be like to not have one or the other. But which one should you buy first? Monitors. On the other hand, if you work at late at night, or if you have a studio with poor acoustics, or your family doesn't appreciate hearing the same two bars looped around, you might have no choice but to work with headphones. If you are going to use headphones, don't use your iPhone earbuds or any other type of consumer headphones. They are designed to make the music sound good. You want the headphones you use to sound as accurate and precise as possible. They should review every detail in your mix, both good and bad, while giving you an accurate balance through across the entire frequency range. So what kind of headphones should you use? Use closed headphones for studio monitoring during tracking and for referencing your mix. For me, I use Sennheiser's MD2080's Pros. They have great response between 8Hz to 25kHz and they reduce 32 dB of outside noise. And also they are very, very comfortable, which is important 
because you will wear these things for hours. Neutral, balanced sound. Another somewhat intangible factor is sound neutrality. Good starter studio monitors exhibit a natural, color-free sound quality. That doesn't mean the sound lacks clarity. It just means it's not slanted towards a particular frequency or type of music. Magnetic shielding. This is important. If you're planning on using your monitors near your computer setup, as most recording studios do, you want to make sure they're magnetically shielded. Powered or active monitors. Face it, you don't have the time or the money to find a studio quality amplifier and then marry it to a compatible set of passive studio monitors. Better and easier to buy a pair of powered monitors that have their own amplifiers. Chances are the amps inside are going to be as good or better than anything you could afford otherwise and they are optimally designed to work with the speakers they're in. Listen. You have to decide which monitors by listening to them at a store that has them set up for comparison. A speaker is a combination of your ears, what fits the room that you work in, and time. Remember, you will be listening to them for hours and hours. Psychoacoustically, they will have to work with your brain. So you have to listen to them to find out which ones really sound comfortable for you to work with. Isolate your monitors from your work desk or stands. If you put your monitors on your desk or stands by themselves, the speakers buzz and worse, get colored by the stuff on which they're sitting upon. The solution I recommend to you, recoil stabilizers made by Prime Acoustic. Recoil stabilizers provide a solid surface upon which the speakers can maintain their clarity and provide professional grade acoustic foam between the platform and the desk or the stand. Subwoofers. Do you need a subwoofer? Whether you need a subwoofer or not depends completely on what you're doing with the audio. The key is to ask yourself, how will your audience listen to your project? If it's likely to get played through a home theater system with a sub or a powerful dance club system, a subwoofer lets you hear what's going on at the lowest bass octaves. If you're missing music, that most people will listen on their iPod or in their car, your mixes probably won't benefit much from what a subwoofer will add to your monitoring system. So to summarize, here are some quick tips on how to make the best of your home production space. Number one, be in the center of the room. Don't have it on the wall and then more towards one side or the other. You do that, you're asking for trouble. You're not going to get good sound, especially if you're using monitors have the short wall in front of you. In other words, go the long way so that the speakers are on the short end and you have more space behind you. That'll help eliminate the issue of, of uh, things bouncing back and coloring your monitoring sound. Number three, make sure you have an equidistant triangle between the two monitors and the listening area. Nothing is as crucial as that. Have the speaker's sweet spot pointed at ear level. Avoid having your monitors too close to the wall. Try to have, if you can, if you have enough space in your room, to have a little space between the monitors and the wall behind them. If you have a subwoofer, don't put it in a corner because bass is omnidirectional. Quite literally, put the subwoofer where you're sitting and then go around on the floor different places and listen and find out where it sounds the best and then swap out the subwoofer on your chair to where your ears were. Try to put your monitors on speaker stands if at all possible. If you can put them on stands away from you it will really help with the mix. Don't forget to use different sound sources for reference. Here's some final thoughts. Remember studio monitors and studio headphones aren't trying to sound good. They're trying to sound as accurate and precise as possible. They should reveal every detail in your mix, both good and bad, while giving you an accurate balance across the entire frequency range. Also remember, it's almost impossible to tell how a set of studio speakers will sound in your room before you get there. 
even if you invest time in listening in a store or a friend's studio. As I said before, the acoustics of your room play a huge role in what you hear when you're mixing. Don't expect them to sound exactly the same. So this has been my presentation for Module 1. I hope you found it informative and I hope you got something uh, that you could use in your own uh, studios. So um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you around.